Hello and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now, over the next hour, there are going to be car chases, live tigers, waterfalls and explosions, all on other channels. Uh, but I'd stay here because this could be even more exciting. Tonight, we have six brand new contestants. Let's meet them. They are... Ian Craig from Bradford. Rapinda Taylor from Greenwich. Tom Rowan Young from Manchester. Jane Malin from Inverness. Aston Lowe from West Hampstead. And Sheila Giles from Preston. Right, now to see who gets to sit in the chair, we're going to play Fastest Finger first. Everybody ready? Yeah, good. OK, here comes the question. Put these dog breeds in alphabetical order. Bloodhound, Bulldog, Beagle, Boxer. OK, time's up. Let's see the correct order. Beagle first, then Bloodhound, then Boxer, and then Bulldog. It will seem pretty quick, but let's see now who got it right. Four of you did. And who was the fastest? It was Tom Rowan Young in four and a quarter seconds. Yeah. Super speedy, but certainly fast. There you are. That's what I love about this show. It's one long sit down. <laughs> so you're Tom Rowan Young, a violinist. Yep. From Manchester. Right, I'm sure you know the rules. I do. Sure everybody at home knows the rules, so we, let's get cracking, shall we? Let's. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> this is your £100 question. The phrase, unexpected item in bagging area, is most likely to be heard in what setting? Paternity ward. <laughs> Pick and mix counter. Supermarket checkout. Or first date. Uh, it's a good job it isn't D. The answer is supermarket checkout. Final answer. And that's £100. Well done. <laughs> this is the £200 question. Small pieces of fried or toasted bread added to soups or salads are known as what? Crumpets, crepe, croissant, or croutons? Uh, those are croutons. Final answer. Good. £200. Well done. Uh, this for 300 Members of which subculture that takes its name from a Germanic tribe are known for wearing black clothing? Goths, gamers, hippies or hipsters? Uh, those are goths. Final answer. And that's £300. Right, this for £500. In which of these DIY jobs is grout most commonly used? Stripping wallpaper, tiling a bathroom, putting up shelves, or hanging a picture? Um, so that would be tiling a bathroom, final answer. And that would be the correct answer, and that's £500. Which means we're now at the £1,000 question, the first safety net. Here it comes. Which famous battle is depicted on the Bayer Tapestry? Hastings, Waterloo, Somme or Agincourt? OK, I don't actually know this one. Um, I've got an idea of what it is. Um, but I think I'd like to use a lifeline, just to be sure. Uh, may I ask you, Jeremy? You may, of course, and here's what I think. It's unnerving, the... the anyway, um... Yes, it, it's, it's, um, it's Hastings. Oh. It's, um... It's the Norman. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was that, but... Once I saw the, an the other answers, I yes, saw Agincourt. Harold got an arrow in his eye and yeah. all the rest of it. I mean, yes, it's not the yeah. Somme, obviously. It's not Agincourt. Yeah, but def definitely Hastings. It's definitely Hastings, 100% on that. And that's my final answer. 
Thank you very much, show me. Uh, let's go Hastings' final answer. And computer, can we reveal the correct answer, please? And there we are. <laughs> you made it to your first safety net. I can now relax, because I'm not going to be called upon again. Now, if you win big, what would you buy? So, first thing I want to do um, is probably take my mum on holiday to Japan, because she grew up there and I was actually born there. Um, mm. But I've never, I've never been, and I've, we left when I was a baby, so that would so be... So you have been? Yeah. <laughs> not that I, I don't remember ever being there. All right. <laughs> would you like to set your safety net at £2,000? Uh, no, thank you. Let's carry on. Righty-ho, here comes your £2,000 question. How to Be a Domestic Goddess is a best-selling book by which TV cook? Angela Hartner, Monica Gilletti, Andy Oliver, Nigella Lawson. OK, I'm pretty sure on this one, because I think my mum had it in the house at some point. I'm pretty certain it's Nigella Lawson, so that's the final answer. And it's the right answer. Well done. That is £2,000. What would be your specialist subjects? Uh, geography I'm pretty good on, and classical music, obviously. Yeah. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that yeah. um, they crop up. I hope so. Right. Do you want to set your safety net at £4,000? Let's keep going for now, I think. All right. Here comes your question. Which of these is a coming-of-age ritual for 13-year-old Jewish boys? Yom Kippur, Hanukkah, Bar Mitzvah or Rosh Hashanah? It's not Hanukkah because that's their... Um, so they have that around Christmas. That's more sort of um, family-oriented, I think. Um, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, again, I'm pretty sure they're to do with another um, religious festival because they take a certain point in the calendar each year. So I am leaning towards Bar Mitzvah because, again, all of the other three are a calendar set date, but if it's a coming of age ritual for the 13 year olds, then not that's happening every day, isn't it? It has to be. Bar Mitzvah, final answer. And you're dead right, it is yes. Bar Mitzvah. Um, Um, Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement and also the name of a war. Uh, Hanukkah is the Festival of Lights. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is uh, the Jewish New Year. Yeah. Right, so would you like to set your safety net at £8,000? Uh, we're doing, doing all right, let's carry on. Okie doke, here comes your question. Located in New York City, what nickname was given to the studio of Andy Warhol? The firm, the factory, the mint or the mill? Right. This is really annoying because I watched a documentary about Andy Warhol um, last month, but can't for the life of me remember exactly what it was um, that he worked in. The mint rings no bell. Right, so I think it's the factory but I think it's worth going 50-50 to see if it's still there, because if it isn't, then I'd have to ask somebody else. All right, fair enough. Uh, computer, could we take away two wrong answers, please? I'd have been happier if one of the other two that's gone has, had been left. Yep, but they aren't. But they aren't, uh, but the factory is still there. This time you'd lose three thousand pounds. Yeah. It's just whether, because I know who I would ring, but I can't. I'm only sort of fifty percent certain that they would know it. Um. No, I think I will ring Felix. That's all right. Righty ho! Can we call Felix, please? And who's Felix? Felix is my brother. Your brother. Right, yeah. 
Artist. Uh, very keen on art. So, oh, well, yes. Hello. Hi, Felix. Hello. Hello. It's Jeremy Clarkson here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Um, we've got uh, Tom here. As I'm sure you know, he's stuck. He needs your help. Uh, can I just make sure there's someone from our office with you, making sure that you're not um, yeah. looking stuff up? <laughs> yeah. OK, wonderful. Yeah. Um, right, Tom, here's how it works. I'm going to hand it over to you in a sec. You've got 30 seconds to read out the question and the two possible answers. And your time starts now. Located in New York City, what nickname was given to the studio of Andy Warhol? The factory or the mill? I don't know that one. I I would go with factory. That's what I thought. How? Yeah. How sure? N not at all. Okay. So well, thank you. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Well, here we are. Here we are. Here he, we are. He, he thinks the factory. I thought it was the factory. Um. I can't, I can, again, I can't be sure that either of, that my next person would know this either. Well, the good thing is, the longer you wait, the less three thousand pounds is worth. <laughs> I mean, inflation is That's going true. to have taken away at least two thousand of that by now. So, okay, you'll be losing just pennies. <laughs> No, I'm going to go with the factory final answer. Well, you were sharp, you were incisive, and you were right. Yes. It is the factory. Well done. I should have trusted myself I had there. Two lifelines to tell you what you already knew. Yeah. Right. Do you want to set your safety net? Uh, bearing in mind you only have one lifeline left now at 16,000. I would like to do that. Yes, OK, please. computer, can we set the safety net, please? The second one at 16,000 pounds. And now let's see if we can get you there. This is your question. What name is given to the structure in a plant cell where photosynthesis takes place? Rhizome, petiole, chloroplast, or calyx? Right. Um... Before the answers came up, I thought it was um, chlorophyll was the chemical which causes that, which would obviously take me to chloroplast. The only thing, the one that's throwing me is rhizome, because I have heard of that mm -hmm. and was never sure of what the function was. So it, that's, that's the only reason I'm hesitating. If it was something completely, something else, I probably would have said chloroplast by now. Well, if you hadn't heard of them, you would have gone with the one you have. Yeah, right. because photosynthesis, you know, that's GCC yeah. biology, but that was a long time ago. I think given um, I'm safe once I answer this question, and then I've got another shot, mm -hmm. I will ring the next person just to get me there. OK, who are we calling this time? Uh, can we ring Topoka, please? Topoka? OK, can we call Topoka, please? Poke is a gardening enthusiast. Plant uh, enthusiast. She's a PhD student in biomedicine at Cambridge. That's probably a good call. Hello. Hi, Topoka. Hiya. Hi there, Jeremy Clarkson here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh, we've got Hi. Tom here. Uh, needs your help. Just making sure you've got someone from our office with you. <laughs> yes, I do. OK, brilliant. OK, Tom, you know the form. You've got 30 seconds and it starts now. What name is given to the structure in a plant cell where photosynthesis takes place? Rhizome, petiole, chloroplast or calyx? It is chloroplast. I thought so. I'm 100%? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Topoka. No worries. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, we both thought it, both pretty certain. Yeah. Chloroplast, final answer. And it's the right answer! So, there we are. Welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We are here and have been for some time with Tom. He's on £16,000, has no lifelines remaining, though. Um, but 
£16,000 is your safety net, so you've got a free shot now at £32,000. Should we see the question? Yes, let's. Here it comes. The Danish politician, Brigitte Nyborg, is the central character of which Nordic TV series? Borgen, Volander, The Bridge, or The Killing? Um, I've only heard of two of these programmes. Never heard of that character. Um, pointless me trying to what, talk through logic because there, w there won't be any. I've got nothing else to go on and nothing to lose, so I think just I'm going to go with Vorlander, final answer. I won't take up any more of your time. That's wrong. Didn't... That's wrong. It was, in fact, um, Borgen, or Borgen. Uh, yeah, just in case uh, you're interested at home, Borgen is the nickname for uh, Christiansborg Palace. Volander was the police inspector, Kurt Volander. It was played by, was it Kenneth Branagh? I seem to think. The bridge was um, Saga Noren, fantastic. And so is the tunnel, the spin-off of it. And the killing was uh, Danish detective inspector Sarah Lund, which is also fantastic. Uh, no matter. You came, you saw, you made a mess of it. <laughs> um, nevertheless, you are leaving with £16,000. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Ryan Young. <laughs> OK, here's my final question. Would you like to see more Who Wants to Be a Millionaire videos? Then click subscribe and you're guaranteed to win. Granted, it's not a million pounds, but it could be worse.